but modern historians have no idea about the mahabharata war because they they just doubt it because they are uh, they have no reason they don't have any evidence but since they say you we, I, we don't have any archaeological evidence that's why they reject the mahabharata war ever occurred or it may be a fiction even it occurred it may be very small scale war sometime it may have so they are not bothered about why because they don't have any chronology beyond buddha right now in the modern textbooks have no chronology at all beyond buddha entire literary, literary data and epigraphic data has to be segregated into two categories and to you if you reconcile every data point can be reconciled and explained but modern historians don't bother about it because they have utter disregard for our literature and utter disregard for our uh, epigraph they just because they don't know even sanskrit also they never read uh, original text they just read whatever has been translated during the colonial <laughs>
according to puranas and all the traditional chronologies even the rajatarangini and and uh, various other texts the mahapadmananda became king of magadha almost uh, in the 5 1500th year it means from mahabharata war to and to coronation of the mahapadmananda 1500 years have been elapsed okay then uh, buddha has to be dated at least 200 years before uh, nandas so naturally the the year the century of buddha has to be 19th century bc this is the traditional chronology but modern historians have no idea about mahabharata war because they they just doubt it because they are uh, they have no reason they don't have any evidence but since they say you we, I, we don't have any archaeological evidence that's why they reject the mahabharata war ever occurred or it may be a fiction even it occurred it may be very small scale war sometime it may have so they are not bothered about why because they don't have any chronology beyond buddha right now in the modern textbooks have no chronology at all beyond buddha and entire indian history starting from vedas to till buddha they cover it up within 1000 years it means indian civilization does not exist or uh, if you go beyond 1500 uh, bc this is the modern uh, uh, but this chronological uh, framework never existed in india uh, just if we go back to 200 years before and mahapadmananda around 350 bc in modern textbooks but traditional chronology says somewhere in the 17th century bc mahapadmananda he was the founder of the nanda dynasty in magadha empire in magadha then maurya suddenly after 100 years or 70 80 years after mahapadmananda chandragupta maurya chanakya has to be dated in the 16th century bc you can't uh, date before that or later that that is the 16th century bc as per the traditional chronology but modern historians 324 to 200 bc this is the maurya dynasty chandragupta was their son 24 28 years 324 there after bindusara then ashoka somewhere in the middle of 3rd century bc now if you date it the chronology uh, ancient our puranic chronology says 16th century bc here you are almost somewhere 324 bc almost 1380 year chronological era and this is exactly translates into adi shankara acharya because the chronological difference between uh, buddha and uh, adi shankara acharya is almost 1300 years you cannot date adi shankara acharya uh, you have to date adi shankara acharya around 1300 years later from buddha so the gap has to be that's why modern historians date adi shankara acharya somewhere 788 ad to 820 ad so this is how adi shankara acharya's date has been brought forward by 1300 years because this is the massive chronological era 1380 years but i just want all of viewers don't just go by the jargons and the lot of scientific words they simply a drop here and there in there, there oh there is a carbon dating and they come out with a, some kind of a scientific dating and archaeology these are all because archaeology is only secondary evidence a supporting evidence it can never be a, a, a primary evidence to fixing up the chronology first second carbon dating carbon dating methodology has been evolved only 1950 1960 70 70 years old years back that's all but prior to that entire world chronology was well established as per the uh, what of the modern historians they already fixed the chronology now what they do carbon dating is simple scientific what you do you have to simply take the raw data of the c14 but they don't take as it is they don't convert carbon years into calendar years what they do they do some kind of a calibration why they have to do calibration because you can if you are translating the carbon years into calendar years there is there is no chronological uh, chronology you will be violating what actually given in literature what they do they do some kind of a calibration calibration is nothing but the the business logic in that they have assumed that the chronology whatever has been established up to 1950 is sacrosanct or it is perfect 
based on that they do some negative calibration and they just brought, brought forward the tails so what i am questioning the calibration business logic not the carbon raw data carbon raw data is scientific but when you do it but first first of all ashokan inscriptions all are rock based rocks cannot be carbon dated so you can never uh, you don't have any confusion that you go to the uh, Juna garden, there is a, a rock inscription, you go and do the carbon dated and fixed the data of Ashoka, why you are, uh, what is the fuss about it, why is so much of it? it is not possible, because rocks cannot be, even copper plates can't be carbon dated. Carbon dating can only happen in an organic uh, material or wood, kind of wood. These, are, these are, you can only do that. So that's why, uh, whenever you are doing chronological studies, you have to understand the, the difference. Archaeology, it's only plus minus some 500 years, 600 years, because right now you got only some pot pottery or some artifacts. But how, you, you, why you, you just assume that this belong to the Mauryan period. First, because in case the Ashokan uh, inscription, if uh, I don't know, till date we haven't found any Ashokan inscription on wood or uh, 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 wood based surface, which can be carbon dated. So that's why we have to follow the traditional chronology. And I'm going to explain to why traditional chronology is perfectly okay. And this is the second one. Now, the our tradition says there was a Vikramaditya in 1st century BC and there were Navaratnas, Varahamira, Kalidasa. They were all in the court of uh, Vikramaditya. And uh, they indicate in our letters, there were two Shaka Samvat, two Shaka Iras existed. Why? Because Varahamira, Kalidasa, they were living in 1st century BC. And Varahmira is referring to 427 Shaka Samvat in his Pancha Siddhantika. And Kalidasa is referring to 445 Shakaira in his Jyotirvida Bharanam. Not only that, the Kalidasa is giving his exact date on which he has compiled Jyotirvida Bharanam. He is giving Kali Yuga 3068. If you translate that into the this Julian calendar, start from the 3101 or 3102 then the date would be 33 BC. So naturally, Kalidasa has to be dated in 33 BC. But problem is, a person living in 1st century BC and Shaka Samvat started somewhere 78 AD, how can a person can refer it to a futuristic epoch, a, a calendar that going to start 100 years later after his death, how can he refer to that calendar? So this is exact that reason modern historians Simply reject the historicity of Vikramaditya. No such king ever existed in Ujjain. It is just a fascination or concoctions or our mythology. You can say whatever. They simply blame us because they can't chronologically establish the historicity of Vikramaditya. Now, Kalidasa has to be in Vikramaditya because he's referring to something. So they put him somewhere in the Chandragupta Vikramaditya of Gupta dynasty, 400 AD uh, around. And they date Varahamira, 6th uh, century. So in modern textbooks, Varahamira uh, uh, is actually, he's, uh, he's taking birth after the death of Kalidasa. But Kalidasa in his text, Jyotir Vidabharanam, he's saying that I am, uh, he's actually referring to Varahamira as his senior contemporary. So this is the serious chronological error. Apart from that, in Malavik Agni Mitram, it is a, a nataka, a play, a Sanskrit play written by Kalidasa. In the just beginning, he is referring to two, three Sanskrit, great Sanskrit poet, Ramilla Somilla and Bhartri Mentha. So these are the three, four Sanskrit poets. He says, actually, in the beginning, a Sutradhara, he comes on the stage and he says that, there are so many great uh, ancient poets have written so many great plays. Why we are just uh, coming to uh, showcase this uh, Malavik Agni Mitram Nataka written by the a modern Sanskrit uh, scholar like Kalidas. So naturally they are referring to Bhartri Minta, Ramilla, Somilla. But traditionally as per the chronology, uh, this Ramilla, Somilla and Bhartri Minta were in the court of Sri Harsha and Sri Harsha is being dated in 7th century. 
Okay. This is another glaring mistake. Then how can you date Kalidasa before Sri Harsha? Sri Harsha and uh, his court poets have to be dated before Kalidasa. But they don't have any respect to any literary evidence or anything because the problem is with the Shaka Sambhat because we are saying there is only one Shaka because last uh, almost uh, uh, 1900 years or more than that we are using this Shaka calendar starting from 78 AD and we are referring to Shaka. We thought every Shaka referred in any way that has to start from 78 AD. So as per my research, there was an ancient epoch existed. Uh, I think a uh, number of times on Sangam talks as I have explained, but I will briefly discuss that also. This is actually a massive chronological error of 660. This is part of 1380 years what I am talking about. Because now I have to explain how that chronological error cropped in in our chronology. The first uh, chronological error of the 660 years. I am actually talking with the model because chronology is the technical subject. So it is the fact based. So that has to have a, some kind of a model. You can't simply reject the data. There is something wrong in your model. You have to correct it. So I'm actually pointing out the blunders, the mistakes committed by the historians while making the a model for the chronology. So we need to change the model instead of rejecting the data. Ah, then this is another, like uh, there is a, uh, a Chandra Gupta of Ujjain. He was the disciple of Bhadrabahu. But modern textbooks, actually, this uh, mistaken identity uh, was established by uh, later Jain historians like Emachandra and after him. They thought because in India, the Mudra Rakshasam, the play was very famous. So uh, Indians uh, knew only Chandragupta Maurya as a very famous king. So the one Chandragupta, a king of Ujjain was the disciple of Bhadrabahu, but he was not a Maurya entire Karnataka literature because this Chandra Gupta became uh, and uh, he actually took the name of Jain monk Vishakhacharya and since he was uh, actually a uh, disciple of Bhadrabahu both actually left Ujjain and uh, settled in uh, Shravana Belgola near to Bang Bangalore and, uh, and they did uh, penance there itself. So that Vishakhacharya that uh, Chandra Gupta uh, Actually, the Karnataka literature refers to them as a Guptanvaya, a people belonging to the Malava Gupta dynasty. They don't belong to Maurya dynasty at all. And moreover, the genealogy, because Chandra Gupta of Ujjain, his son was Siddha Sena and his son was Bhaskara. So there is no match between the, the, the genealogies of Chandra Gupta of Ujjain and the genealogy of the Chandra Gupta Maurya. So that's why there is a mistaken identity. This led to uh, mis, uh, a, a kind of a misunderstanding that Buddha and Mahavira were contemporaries. So that led to another 700 years. This actually, the 1380 years chronological error, what I have pointed out in the first uh, the unsolved puzzle, that have two parts. First, the Shakaira, we have assumed only one epoch, actually two epochs. If you do it, then entire data, literally, epigraphic, every data can be validated. If you are accepting only one epoch, you have to reject uh, arbitrarily the whatever uh, liter liter literary data as well as the epigraphic data. And this also, uh, 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 this and then uh, the mistaken identity, the famous uh, blunder committed by the modern historian, because humko kuch lena dena nahi Alexander said. Our entire history, our literature, epi nowhere no reference to Alexander at all. Okay. Yes, there is a reference of some uh, Indo Greeks in the inscriptions of Ashoka that I will explain who are they. But this Alexander, first Alexander, if, if the dating of Alexander is important to the Greek, Greek civilization, nothing to do with the Indian civilization. Even some Alexander came, we will fix his, his date uh, and we will find out who was the Chandragupta who, is con who was contemporary of Alexander. But first we have to arrive in Indian chronology without referring to Greek chronology. But don't mix up and then completely reject. But this the same mistake uh, was committed by the modern historians and that led to this 1380 year a massive chronological error in Indian chronology, especially after Buddha. So once you correct it, entire uh, traditional chronology can be 
uh, factfully uh, established. Now, when I studied, these are all chronological problems. Then my research, I just uh, give you three postulates, what I have established. Because first, the, uh, you, everyone has to remember these three. First, there were two shaka, two epochs of shaka era. One ancient shaka, I actually named separately shaka, shakanta. When the shaka era ended, the uh, Indian astronomers introduced a new epoch because they are actually searching for a uh, new calendar for uh, uh, for introducing the Ayanansha. So that's why two epochs uh, existed, one 583 BC and uh, another uh, epoch that commenced in 78 AD. And uh, second, this is another mistake, Buddha Mahavira were not contemporaries. This contemporaneity was uh, established due to mis, uh, mistaken identification of Chandragupta, of Ujjain, who was a disciple of Bhadrabahu. And uh, another third, this is nothing to do Indian chronology, but we have to, uh, because we are now, Indian chronology has to be reconciled in Julian and Gregorian calendar as well as with the uh, world chronology. So, the entire world chronology has been reconciled considering the first AD as the sheet anchor since the last 300 years. But what my research establishes that the first AD was an epoch of Eastern date calculus. It was not an epoch of Jesus' birth. This is another chronological area because uh, the because we have to fix the Alexander's date. Because anyhow, Alexander came to in India. He invaded up to somewhere Takshashila and probably up to Rawalpindi, that area. So Greek historians refer to uh, Sandrocotus and uh, uh, even Megasthenes came during that time. So we have to fix the date also. But what to do? We we just refer it to first AD. And uh, since uh, Alexander died 323 years before Jesus' birth, that's where we fix 323 BC. But first we have to work out. But this is this problem we will discuss much later. First, we will talk about these two. First two uh, postulate what I'm saying. There were two different Shakairas and Buddha and Mahavira were not, con uh, were not contemporaries. So these are the two monumental mistakes. So we are going to uh, how to solve. These are the, this is the uh, uh, my finding uh, based on the epigraphic evidence. There is a, an old shakaira and there was another new shaka. Uh, due to since we are using shaka calendar since 78 AD. We started referring both, as, especially the Shaka calendars were uh, more popular in South India. So that's why they just referred to Shaka. The Shaka actually becomes synonymous to any era nowadays in South Indian uh, languages. Generally, Shaka is referred to any era. So that is the uh, confusion that led to the mix-up of these two epochs and it led to a, a massive chronological error of 660 years, exactly 661 years. So how I have established, there was a copper plate, Kurtakoti copper plate. It is dated in Shaka 530 and it is actually referring to a total solar eclipse and it is giving exact date, time and nakshatra and the sun moon position, everything. Now this is verifiable. So let us establish in case 78 AD is the only epoch. Let us assume that it is the only epoch. Then you just add another uh, 530 years. It would be 608 AD. Okay. If it is 608, then you establish occurrence of total solar eclipse in Badami because this is this copper plate was issued by the kings of Badami. So Badami is Northern Karnataka. You have to take longitude, latitude of Northern Karnataka, that Badami, and establish the occurrence of total solar eclipse. So there was no such total eclipse occurred in India. So they failed to establish and then finally rejected this copper plate since it refers to one Vikrama Aditya son of uh, the Chalukya Pulakeshin. They rejected this copper plate as a forgery. So this is the another problem. Since this, you are not able to accommodate this copper plate in your chronological model, 
what you are doing, you are just blaming the data. So this is the very childish methodology. You can't simply reject the data since you are, it, it does not fit into your model. They say there, there would be something wrong in your model also. Why don't you review the model? So what I'm saying, when we correct this, the two shakas, then what we need to do, entire literary, literary data and epigraphic data has to be segregated into two categories. And to you, if you reconcile, every data point can be reconciled and explained. But modern historians don't bother about it because they have utter disregard for our literature and utter disregard for our uh, epigraph. They just, because they don't know even Sanskrit also, they never read uh, original text. They just read whatever has been translated during the colonial. And whatever the direction they have shown, we are following that direction, that's all. Without even verifying the, what is the truth. Since our tradition, traditional chronology has been rejected, I just wanted to revalidate it, whether the, it, the rejection is valid or not. So then I found a glaring mistakes that the way the modern research went into. So they, they simply rejected the uh, uh, volume of data since their model is not able to explain. So now what I'm saying that the reference of total solar eclipse in the in that copper plate, that is Kurtakoti, it is the place where the copper plate has been found. What I did, I have taken somewhere a 3000 years uh, uh, time period from 1500 BC to 1500 A. Let us uh, find out how many total solar eclipses have occurred in Northern Karnataka because that has to be visible in totality. So only 10 solar eclipses, I have listed it out, if you can say 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 10. And since it is referring to a total solar eclipse on Vaishakha Amavasya, this Vaishakha Amavasya generally occurs somewhere end of April or in the mid in May. So if you see, except one, none other than this 9th May 53 BC matches the data given in that copper plate. Okay. It means that copper plate is referring to actually 9th May 53 BC. Now what you have to do? You have to add 530 years to 53 BC. So 583 BC. Here I am considering zero year. Okay. Because uh, Julian calendar has no zero year because they don't to have any such, uh, they followed very primitive mathematics, first AD to first BC, exactly, they jump from first AD to first BC. If you consider zero, then 583. If you are not considering, then 584 BC, because even one year also, it is a huge uh, error in the chronology. So this is how, this is the hard evidence. And in that copper plate, it is mentioned that this, so this solar eclipse ended somewhere in that Madhyana Samaye, means at the time of noon. So based on the modern calculations and even NASA website and numerous softwares are available. Uh, the eclipse started in Northern Karnataka somewhere 9 a.m. and ended around exactly 12, 12 p.m. So every information given in this copper plate validates that 9th May 53 BC only explained. Okay. So this is the hard evidence to fix an exact epoch for the ancient Shakaita. This is the reason why Varahamira, who is living in 1st century BC, is saying that 427 Shaka is taking as an epoch. And Kalidasa, who is uh, writing a Jyotir Vidhabharanam in Kali Yuga 3068, means 33 BC, and he is referring to 445 Shaka. So now everything, the entire traditional chronology is perfect. So now what we need to do, we have to only segregate all literary uh, sources which refer to Shaka and the epigraphic uh, sources which refer to Shaka has to be segregated into two categories, the copper plates and the uh, literature refer, uh, uh, related to the old Shaka and the later Shaka, then you work out the chronology and everything, uh, entire chronology can be unfolded. and. Uh, that validates that our tradition is perfect. There is nothing wrong in, in our tradition. This is the uh, one what, and uh, this 78 AD, why 78 AD? Anybody may have any question that, okay, in case 583 BC, Ashaka Samvat established by the Shaka king, 
Then what is about this 78 AD? Actually, in the 1st and 2nd century BC, the Indian astronomers, uh, that time actually, um, uh, uh, the sun entered into Ashwini nakshatra, a zero degree of Ashwini, a first degree of Ashwini. A vernal equinox started occurring at first degree of Ashwini. Now they wanted to know this, uh, incorporate the error of precession. That is called Ayanansha. Uh, for that purpose, they were looking for a, a perfect conjunction because uh, for calculating the planetary motions, your calendar should start or your epoch should start from a conjunction. So in 78 AD, 1st April 78 AD, a perfect conjunction of Sun, Moon and Jupiter. But Jupiter is very, very important for the uh, Ayanansha. And uh, because the 12-year 12, 12 cycle, the Jovian cycle and for everything. So this is actually selected by the Indian astronomers and this epoch was not established by any Shaka king. So this is the difference between 78 AD and 583 BC. But since 70, after 78 AD, we started using the Shaka calendar. We are referring to Shaka, Shaka. So then we thought every Shaka started from 78 AD. This actually mistake committed by Indians. They, for, they have forgotten. So that's why when Britishers came, okay, they say, Oh, we have a great tradition, Vikramaditya, Navaratna, they lived uh, somewhere 57 BC. Then there's a simply question, Varamira, Kalidasa, you are saying they lived in 1st century BC, but they are referring to Shakasamvat that started 78 AD, how they can be dated in 1st century BC? We had no, no answer. But our tradition is correct once we uh, validate based on the various facts. So this is how, this is the uh, chronological error of 661 years. And this I have already explained. Then I will give you some very uh, basic uh, uh, evidence simply. There is a one copper, uh, sorry, one lithic inscription in somewhere closer to a Beluru uh, in Karnataka. And it is referring to Shaka Varshada 2027, Ananda Samvatsara. So now, 2027 20, plus 78, it would be 2105. We are presently 2022. It means we have to wait another 90, 95 years, uh, somewhere 80, 80 uh, almost 80, 86 uh, uh, years. To, uh, it means uh, this inscription is yet to be written. Then modern historians, they just distort it is not 2027, they converted 2 into 1 and 1, 1017. But that is distortion. You are actually uh, corrupting the data. That is not allowed. That is not a scientific research. And moreover, why uh, it can't be a scribble error? Because one and two in in Kannada script, so totally you write it totally differently. No one can mistake it uh, in place of one. He will write two. That is not possible at all. It is actually. In somewhere 13th, 14th century, the same ancient Shaka calendar existed in Karnataka. It was continuing up to that. And they have referred it to the 583 BC. If you do it, it is actually 1443, 144, 144. This is the year. In the 15th, in the middle of 15th century, this inscription was written. Okay. There is another inscription I'll show you. And this is the Vijayanagara inscription and is referring to Shakavarsha 1975. It means you have to wait another 31 years so that this inscription can be written and one Vijayanagara king has to be coronated in Karnataka somewhere 2053. In future, after the, uh, another 31 years, we have to wait to get this inscription. So then again, they started that to do something. They, they uh, It's only once you are not ready to re review your model, what you do, you do forgeries in your data or you corrupt the data. So this is how modern historians started doing their own. It is not 1975. It is maybe 14 or 1375. Some way they just change the nine with something and they manage it with them. This is very childish way of doing the research. Okay, there is another, this is another inscription. It is the Hoyasela king. He is referring to 1919 Shaka. It is clearly written. There is no way, no doubt at all. I don't know those who can read the Kannada script. I can read it like a Shaka Varusha 1919. So 191 in 1997, I don't know. In 1997, uh, 
Karnataka, no Hoyasala king was ruling there. Some, but some chief minister, probably Devagoda or his son or his, uh, somebody may be ruling that time. Okay. So now there is no, they have no way to explain these, these inscriptions. There are many. I am not going into so many details because I have uh, actually worked more than 100 errors in the modern chronological model since they follow only one epoch. If you follow both epoch, every inscription can be explained. Then what is the better model? So there is something wrong in the chronological model ad adopted by the modern historians after 1784. This is another copper. Uh, there are two copper plates you can clearly see in this picture. This is, these two copper plates found hardly 2013 or 14, uh, probably seven, eight years or 10 years back while exca uh, during excavation set Pranaveshwara temple in Talagunda, uh, closer to Karnataka, in, in Karnataka. And uh, these two copper plates have been written almost same script. Because, um, uh, and one copper plate is referring to Shaka 1102, another is referring to 520. Now, modern historians rejected the a copper plate uh, which refers to 520 as a forgery or they say it is a, some fraudulent case. But if you accept both Shaka, Shakanta, so this, uh, that uh, Chalukya King Vinayaditya, he is actually referring to 78 AD epoch. Whereas Kalachuri king Sangama, he is referring to 583 BC, the epoch of 583 BC. So these two copper plates have been with the, some 70, 80 years difference. That's why the script is there. There is a cross references in both uh, both uh, in script, uh, both copper plates. These copper plates actually are land donation to a Brahmana. So there is a boundary that have been mentioned. That particular land piece, what is the northern side, what is the west side, what was south side. So the the boundaries have been defined. Same boundaries have been defined in this copper plate also. So it is uh, perfectly both are uh, valid. Just you have to refer it to two different shipping books. And moreover, in this, the copper plate, what they have rejected as a forgery, it refers to a, a, a solar eclipse. And that solar eclipse on Chaitra Mavasya. And 520 plus 78, 599, uh, the 30th April, 599 AD, there, there, there was a solar eclipse and that was visible in India. So the reference to the solar eclipse can also be established. Now, this is another issue. What I'm saying now that I have explained the Shaka, Shakanta difference is very important. That actually solves our chronological problem of 660 years. Out of 1381 years, what are the main chronological error between the dating in Buddha? Now, this is another problem. This I have briefly explained to you. Bhadrabahu's disciple Chandra Gupta was not a Mauryan king. But Hemachandra, he, he started uh, equating the Chandra Gupta Maurya as the Chandra Gupta, a, a disciple of Bhadrabahu. And one more, there was a, uh, the Jain text, they refer to one Napit Nanda, a Nanda who, was a, who belonged to the caste of Barbar, but he became the king of Magadha. But Mahapadmananda was not a, uh, he was actually son of uh, that Shishunaga king, the Shishunaga dynasty was ruling at that time. And Mahapadmananda was his legitimate or illegitimate king. But he never belonged to any Barbar caste or he was uh, nothing to do with it. So there is, these two were different. The Jain literature refers to only one Nanda who was, who belonged to a uh, barber caste or he was a, his father or his lineage belonged to a barber. Where Mahapadmananda, he belonged to, he may be illegitimate child, but he he belonged to the uh, Kshatriya rulers of Magadha, a, dynasty, a Shishunaga dynasty. And he, there were the Navanandas. The Puranas talk about nine Nanda king, and, uh, the, uh, and uh, even uh, Buddhist literature refers to the nine Nandas, where Jain literatures talk about only one Nanda. So the modern historians think both refer to the same. This is the, and Mahavira, Mahavira Nirvana is exactly mentioned 605 years before the Shaka. Now you have to uh, fix the Mahavira Nirvana 
605 years before 583 BC, then 1189 BC is there. Then Chandragupta, he became the king of Ujjain in the 150, 150, 55th year. So what you have to do, 1189 minus 155, somewhere in the 11th century BC, 133 or 140 uh, BC. 1040 or 1033, somewhere he became the king of Ujjain, Chandragupta. So uh, the, according to Puranas, Chandragupta Maurya has to be dated 16th century, where the Ujjain Chandragupta lived in the 11th century BC. So both cannot be the same. And moreover, the Chandragupta, who became the disciple of Bhadrabahu, and uh, he was ruling in Ujjain, his son's name is Simhasena. And Simhasena's son was Bhaskara, and Bhaskara's son was Samprati. Okay. And this kind of a genealogy is not available in Purana. There is a totally different Chandragupta, Bindusara, Ashoka. And there is beneath Shali Shoka. Then uh, there are seven, eight kings in Mauryan dynasty. Here, this Bhaskara, he, the grandson of Chandragupta, he actually established that city of Shravanabelgur. He was the founder of that city because in the in memory of his grandfather, he has done a lot of Jain, uh, probably he constructed certain Jain structures in Shravana Belgola. This is the history of Shravana Belgola starting from 11th century BC, uh, BC onwards. And Bhadrabahu, he attained Nirvana 178th year starting from uh, Mahavira Nirvana. So, Bhadrabahu lived in 11th century BC. So he cannot be contemporary of Chandragupta Maurya, who lived in the 6th century BC, 16th century BC. So this is the, a massive mistake committed by the Jain historians. What I am saying, these two problems, considering the Shaka, ancient Shaka and later Shaka as one Shaka, and as well as considering the Chandragupta Maurya as the Chandragupta of uh, uh, the disciple of Bhadrabahu, these two mistakes committed by Indians only. It's not the Western uh, scholars. But we never, that time nobody used to ask us to perfectly explain the chronology. We were following a history and we used to teach our history to the students uh, in a, a rough chronological model. But when Britishers came, they started doubting every fact. And then when they started questioning, we could not explain. So that led to the refixing of our chronology by the Western uh, scholars. So this is the problem why we, uh, we failed to explain these two problems because we were believing in two uh, only one Shaka epoch when Britishers came, as well as we started believing that Chandragupta Maurya was a disciple of the Bhadrabahu. These two blunders, I can say a monumental mistake, led to a chronological error of 1380 years in dating of Buddha Nirvana. Okay. Now, this is the, apart from that, the Jain sources, uh, first they gave the Ujjain from Mahavira Nirvana onward. Uh, uh, the day Mahavira attained Nirvana, same day, one uh, Pradyota, he was the king of Ujjain, he died. So Ujjain timeline is after that Palaka, then Vishaya, then Murunda. Okay. And Magadha, Shrenika, Kunika, Udhebhadra, Nanda. This is the only the, the Magadha timeline and the Ujjain timeline given in Jain literature. Okay. What I am saying that this, uh, this timeline as well as the, the genealogy of the kings given in Jain literature cannot be reconciled with the Buddha literature because Buddha literature is in too many kings. Like first uh, from uh, Buddha Nirvana, then Bimbisara, Ajata Shatru, Udayi, Aniruddha, Naga Dasaka, Shishunaga, Kala Shoka, then Tenson, thereafter Nanda, then, then Maurya. Now, the historians, they equated Shrenika with the Bimbisara, but there is no reference of Bimbisara in general literature. They refer to one Bhambasara, but he has nothing to do first. Second, there is only reference of Kunika, no reference of Ajata Shatru in entire Jain literature. There is only reference of Ajata Shatru in Buddhist literature. So the Ajata Shatru mentioned in Buddhist literature was not a Kunika. So this is how this mistaken identifications led to a too many chronological problems. 
And since these can't be reconciled, this is the reason British historians found that the Puranic literary, Puranic uh, chronology and the Jain chronology and Buddhist chronology can't be reconciled at all. And they blame that Indians are very worst kind of a, uh, they can't maintain their own history. They don't have any sense of chronology. So then they started uh, doing this kind of a radical research means they're simply rejecting every traditional fact and they simply uh, went ahead considering the only Shaka epoch 78 AD. So this is how and they considered Chandragupta Maurya as the disciple of Bhadrabahu. Based on that, they fixed the Indian chronology that led to 1380, uh, the loss of 1381 years of Indian history. But if we follow, Puranas are referring to Mahabharata epoch. Magadha, this Buddhist literature is referring to the epoch of Buddha Nirvana. And Jain literature is referring to the epoch of Mahavira Nirvana. Three are different epochs. You have to reconcile the chronology in three different epochs. Then you work out how the chronology can be reconciled. So I will show you how Puran, the chronology given in Purana, the chronology given in Jain sources and the chronology Buddhist sources can be easily reconciled. If you differentiate, if you can correct this error of 1308 years, 81 years chronological blunder. So first what I did, okay, let us go to, because we don't have many inscriptions which refers to the epoch of Buddha. There is only one epoch found in Gaya. Then, but there are Burmese and Sri Lankan because they, they are following traditionally Buddhism since uh, very ancient times. So when I have listed out the almost 19 inscriptions in the, because I taken, uh, so there are new, hundreds of inscriptions, but I have taken only those inscriptions in which Shaka Samvat as well as Buddha Nirvana, uh, Buddha Dhamma era both have been mentioned. Okay. So now the difference between, this is the 1601 Buddha, Buddha Nirvana era, Buddha Dhamma era and 419 is the Shaka Samvat. Uh, if you the difference is 1182. If you take only one or two, one mistake, if you can ignore it, 18 inscriptions are giving the difference of 1182 years between Shaka and the Buddha Dhamma era. So, what we need to do? 583 BC plus 1182 is actually 1765 BC. So, this is how the Buddha Dhamma era is this epoch was actually the epoch of Theravada Buddhism. But uh, what modern history, so this is the what I am showing an inscription. This is the, like a, the year of the Buddha Dhamma is 1919 and Shakarat, Shaka Samvat 737. Now, how the modern, modern historians have done it? They said, okay, Shaka Samvat uh, Buddha Varsha minus Shakaira is, is, is equal to 1182 years. Now, they said that, no, there is a Burmese era in 638 AD, but there is no Burmese era, but all inscriptions are referring to Shaka Samvat. So, they say, no, it is the Burmese Shaka Samvat. I don't know why there is a need for the Burmese to refer it to Shaka in 638 AD. So, this is a fictitious, it is actually some Maki, a calendar introduced in Chetgaon. It is actually like uh, even today Bengalis follow a uh, Bengali uh, Bonga Varsha uh, somewhere uh, that uh, commenced in uh, 594 AD. Even today they start. In continuation, a calendar was introduced in Chetgaon somewhere in 638 AD. They selected it as a Shaka Samvat. It is another, I don't, there are only two Shaka, either 583 or 788 AD. There is no Shaka Samvat in 5638. And nothing to do with the Shaka. Burmese have no link with the Shaka at all. And why they refer it to this calendar as the Shaka? So this is how they made, uh, they, they what they did, they calculated from 638 AD to 1182 BC. This is how this um, 544 BC. The modern historians fixed the Buddha Nirvana in 544 BC. But still, there is a problem. As per Mahavansha and Deepavansha, this um, that Ashoka was coronated in six, 218 years after Buddha Nirvana. And he 
uh, and the Buddhist council. Second, the Buddhist council uh, was held in 236 years. So now what they did, they have minus another 61 year irrationally and they fixed in 583 BC because they were uh, obsessed to establish the contemporaneity of Chandragupta Maurya and Alexander. That's why they did this. Uh, this is actually forgery. Even I'll take 638 as the Shaka Samvat. So you have to fix the Buddha Nirvana in 544 BC only. If you fix the Buddha Nirvana 544, then Chandragupta has to be dated somewhere 370 or 380. There is a 50, 60 years difference between Chandragupta Maurya and Alexander. Okay. Now it is better to reduce the 61 years and then ensure that uh, Chandragupta Maurya and uh, Alexander are so for their obsession, they have done this fraud of 61 years and they fixed an, uh, 483 BC. Yeah. But traditional chronology is seeing epigraphic evidence I have presented to you, more than 19 inscriptions. They are actually referring to the, our old Shaka Samvat 583 BC and saying that 1765 BC is the epoch of Buddha Dhamma. So the difference between Buddha Dhamma Buddha Dhamma is actually the Theravada. Theravada was born in second Buddhist council and that took place uh, 100 years after Buddha Nirvana. And Theravadins were very, uh, they followed very strict life and they never wanted any freedom to be given to the, both the bhikshus where Mahasangyakas wanted some kind of a liberty where the Theravadins, so Theravadins claim they are the real Buddha Dhamma. This is the reason all Theravadins, they follow this epoch 1765 BCE that commenced 100 years after Buddha Nirvana. So what we need to do, we have to add another 100 years. Then we will get the Buddha Nirvana 1864 BC. So we have two epochs. One is the Buddha Nirvana that commenced in 1864 BCE, whereas the epoch of Buddha Dhamma, the Theravada Buddha Dhamma is 1765 BC. Now, this explains the short chronology and the long chronology. I hope you might have heard about the short chronology and uh, long chronology. Why? Because Kala Shoka, according to the Buddhist literature as well as the Sri Lankan literature also, Kala Shoka reigned around uh, 100 years after Buddha Nirvana. In long chronology, uh, like Mahavansha, it is mentioned that Ashoka became king of uh, Magadha 218 years after Buddha Varsha. So, the, there were two different Ashokas. Uh, Kala Shoka, he reigned 100 years after Buddha Nirvana. Entire North Indian lit Buddhist literature, there are 90% uh, of Buddhist literature referred uh, refer to the, this epoch. Uh, and Kala Shoka reigned for 28 years, 1765 to 1770. So what I am saying, the Ashoka, the so many Ashokan inscriptions found in India, starting from Shahabhaj Gadi and uh, even uh, from Lumbini, then Karnataka. So, so many inscriptions, actually those, the author of those inscriptions was, was the Kala Ashoka, not Mauryan Ashoka. Because all those inscriptions, they refer to Devanam Priya Priyadarshi. And there are five, six or seven inscriptions referred to name of Ashoka, but nowhere any reference to Maurya at all. And he was the Ashoka who lived 100 years after. This is the reason all, even Ashoka Avadana, uh, uh, the Divya Avadana one chapter, which gives the entire history of Ashoka, that also referring to the, uh, the coronation of Ashoka in the 100th year of Buddha Nirvana. So this is the problem. What modern history, they simply reject uh, short chronology, they go by the long chronology. What I'm saying, both are valid. The South Indian tradition, the Sri Lankan and Burmese tradition, they are referring to Maurya Ashoka because he was the founder of, actually he is promoting the Theravada. That's why Theravadins follow Maurya Ashoka, even that Sangamitra, Mahindra Sangamitra who came to Sri Lanka, they lived in the 6th century, 16th century BC. This is how we need to reconcile the Buddhist chronology, considering the two epochs. One is the epoch of Buddha, uh, Buddha Nirvana. 1864 BC. Another is the epoch of Theravada Buddhism, 1765 BC. Now, how to fix the Mahabharata? Now, I gave the Buddha first is Shaka year 583 BC. 
then you have fixed the buddha nirvana 1864 bc then how to arrive the mahabharata date apart from internal astronomical references let us follow this is the uh, inscription it is available even today you can go to the aihol temple in badami close to the badami uh, in this inscription it is mentioned that the shaka year 556 and it is also giving the year of mahabharata war. So this inscription is referring to 3135 years. So now 556 Shaka because it, it is giving two epochs, Mahabharata War epoch as well as the Shaka epoch. So we need to first calculate the Shaka year simply starting from 583 BC, it is the 27 BC. Then you add 3135 years and it goes to 3162 BC. This is how our traditional because why epigraphic evidence is the most authentic and primary evidence because these are the original documents. These can't be rewritten. Our manuscripts, because you're writing on uh, Bhojapatra or Talapatra, they have to be rewritten after 300 years, 400 years because you cannot uh, preserve those for thousands of years. So while rewriting, there may be some mistakes uh, uh, possible. So that's why the primary evidence is the epigraphic evidence. So this is giving the 3162 is the Mahabharata. Based on that, if you work out the chronology, what is the our chronology starting from Mahabharata to Vikramaditya? This is the Mahabharata war 3162 BC. Then as per the Purana, there are numerous Puranas talk about Brihadratha dynasty. There is a, uh, a son of Jarasandha. He became the king of Magadha. So slowly after, uh, because Pandavas were ruling in Hastinapura uh, and uh, close to the, this uh, Kurud, um, their uh, uh, Hastinapura and Indraprastha, uh, after that Janamejaya, Parikshit Janamejaya, after Janamejaya, there was the Shatanika. After Shatanika, the Pandava dynasty became weak. Magadha became more powerful in the North India. That's why the Brihadratha dynasty's thousand years history has been given. And thereafter, Pradyota dynasty reigned around 135-140 years. And uh, Shishunaga dynasty, 20-24 to 1,662 <coughs> years. Then Nanda dynasty, somewhere 80-90 years. Then Maurya dynasty, you can work out. Thereafter, Shunga dynasty. There is a no king period. This is a, It is mentioned in Puranas also. They generally don't refer if Kshatriyas are not ruling. If somebody, they may be some, like Kushanas. The Kushanas have to be dated during this period. According to my chronological research, Kushanas reigned somewhere 1150 to 1000 BC. This 150 years, they ruled over in the north, uh, from Afghanistan to up to Mathura and sometimes up to Magadha. Then Shatavahana, the Shatavahana dynasty. Then Gupta dynasty, 334 BC to 89 BC. Then Vikramaditya, he reigned around in the 82 BC so, and most uh, one somewhere 78 years uh, Vikramaditya was ruling in Ujjayi. This is our traditional uh, chronology. What I'll do, I'll just uh, briefly go to the uh, the chart, how we are going to reconcile the our chronology. Uh, the Brihadratha dynasty, exactly 1000 years, okay. 3162 to 21, then Pradyota dynasty 138 years, 2120-24, then Shishunaga dynasty 360 years, 1664 BC. The 1664 BCE was the year in which Mahapadmananda became emperor of Magadha. Now, while working out this Shishunaga dynasty, we need to reconcile the Buddhist chronology also. According to Buddhist chronology, in Magadha, one Haryanka dynasty is King Mahapadma, then Bimbisara, Ajata Shatru were ruling. So then we have to parallel it because Shishunaga, uh, these Haryanka dynasty kings were actually, they were very notorious. Uh, almost every son killed his father and became the king of Magadha. Like Ajata Shatru killed Bimbisara and he became the king of, and Udayi killed Ajata Shatru and became the king. So they were uh, almost every king actually killed his father and became. Then finally, the ministers of Magadha, they replaced this dynasty. And they uh, brought one king, Shishunaga. He was actually related to someone in the Kashmir. And his son was the Kala Shoka. And the same Kala Shoka was ruling over Kashmir. The, there is a king of uh, uh, Srinagar, uh, the Ashoka who 
established the city of Srinagar and the Rajatarangani refers to a king of Kashmir as an Ashoka was actually Kala Ashoka. Uh, then thereafter, the Aniruddha Munda, Naga Dasaka, Shishunaga. Shishunaga and then Kala Ashoka. This is how and uh, during this time, these guys uh, means the up to Naga Dasaka, they were ruling in Rajagriha, that Rajagir in Magadha, where the Shishunaga dynasty, the dynasty mentioned in Purana, they were actually ruling over in Vaishali. After this uh, Shishunaga, the Kala Ashoka, he actually conquered entire all the uh, entire India uh, in a way. He expanded his uh, rule almost up to Karnataka and up to closer to the Afghanistan borders. So this Kala Ashoka and after Kala Ashoka, his 10 sons ruled over somewhere 22 years. And thereafter, there is a reference of some uh, uh, Hushka, Jushka, Kanishka in uh, Raja Tarangini. They were not Kushana. Actually, they referring they actually refer to some other uh, this Kanishka. Hushka, Jushka, Kanishka were not Kushana. They actually in 1150 around. These Hushka, Jushka, Kanishka, they were uh, they reigned over Kashmir almost 200 years after Ashoka. Then Nanda dynasty and Maurya dynasty. This is how we are going to reconcile the chronology. Based what I'm uh, going, what I did in this uh, chart, Puranic chronology, Jain chronology, and uh, Buddha, the Buddhist chronology. All three can be perfectly reconciled if you follow the uh, because Puranic chronology has to be reconciled based on the epoch of Mahabharata war only because Purana gave the chronology starting from the Mahabharata war and from the birth of Parikshit. Parikshit was born few, one or two months later, Mahabharata war. Abhiman Yusan Parikshit was born immediately after the Mahabharata war. That's why the birth of Parikshit and the Mahabharata war both are almost same year. So from that, you have to work out the chronology. The Buddhist chronology, you have to work out from the 1864 BC, whereas the Jain chronology, you have to work out starting from 1189, 1189 BC onwards. Because that is the year in which Mahavira attained Nirvana. So this is how I have uh, explained it to you. This is the uh, now after this uh, Kanva dynasty, when Magadha Empire declined, then sh that uh, Shrenikar Bhambasara he was the king of Rajagriha. Then Mahavira attained Nirvana. Then Kunika Udai and Napita Nanda he became the king of uh, Magadha. During this, his time only Kushana, the Kanishka, he invaded Magadha. And this is how we can, uh, the Chandragupta Vishakhachari, he was the Ujjain king. He ruled around 1034 to 1022 BC. And then he handed over uh, kingdom to Simhasena, his son, and he came to Shravana Belgola and became a Jain monk. Then Bhaskara, thereafter Samprati, thereafter Murunda. In entire uh, the uh, Jain literature written prior to Hemachandra, there is, there is no reference to Maurya. There is a reference to Shaka Murunda. These Murundas, they started uh, referring to Muriya, then they said they were the Maurya. Shaka Murundas were totally different. They have nothing to do with the Mauryan dynasty. This is how then Shatavahana's king and uh, Vikramaditya Fuja. This is how we can work out our 3000 years chronology starting from 3162 BC to 1 BC. So in the next part, I will explain how our chronology unfolds starting from 1st BC to till the war of uh, the, I can say, the Panipat, uh, the war of Panipat somewhere 1761 AD. Uh, rest chronology is well known, the British, the, uh, the colonial era and then the modern. So I will restrict my chronological, uh, the presentation starting from 1st BC to 1761 AD in the next session. Thank you. So you have uh, kind of opened a Pandora's box. There's such a lot of confusion um, after what mm. you have uh, delivered. Uh, Perhaps we need to study it more. But uh, there are a few um, uh, very simple questions I have. Yeah. Uh, so the Sandrakotas that uh, the Greeks are referring to, um, then was it uh, Chandragupta Vikramaditya of the Gupta dynasty or Samudra Gupta? 
Ha ah, yes no he, he, the sandrocortes mentioned in greek literature or greek referred by greek historians he was neither a chandragupta maurya nor chandragupta two of magadha uh, the gupta dynasty first we need to work out the greek chronology why you are assuming that greek chronology is perfect that is an assumption the problem is i am saying every fact actually the problem is last uh, 1700 uh, 1600 to 1700 this century that uh, 17th century the christians they started to reconciling the world chronology because bible refers to so many dynasties they refer to assyrian they refer to babylonian they refer to egyptian kings there was a um, they, they wanted to reconcile the world chronology for that purpose they have said that first ad is our era our lord was incarnated so they started from first ad so they accepted first ad blindly as the sheet anchor they fixed the chronology but you know, the greek history has nothing to do with the jesus birth ancient greeks followed their chronology starting from trojan war like we follow mahabharata war the first you have to first fix the epoch of trojan war but last 300 years they simply rejected trojan war is the might like mahabharata war so they don't bother at all the greek history so then what they did now they found the archaeological uh, archaeologists found, uh, found the city of troy and they established that there was a city existed but uh, now some way they, they give a date but they just calculate backwards from first ad they go but first first ad if it is the sheet anchor has to withstand it so then only that deserves to be sheet anchor and second they followed olympiad era olympiad era has nothing to do with the jesus birth so there is a chronological error why i am saying my third postulate i have not explained because that i will explain in my next session that because what i am going to that would be more mind boggling i am going to say there is a chronological error even in islamic uh, history yeah. so in a way i'll just give a hint out that the jesus birth has been assumed mistakenly in first ad my challenge to the west world historians that first arrive the chronology up to augustus without referring to first ad are you give me an independent evidence to establish there is no evidence they just fix that oh august jesus was born in 42nd year of augustus okay so that's why first ad are this is the uh, circular reasoning i am not questioning the that is different issue whether jesus born or not there is a, another atheist uh, movement that they, they always question every uh, divine personality i am not going to i am saying 42nd regnal year of august is the historic year but why should i assume that first ad is the 42nd regnal year they don't have because they have to go backwards only first ad this is the biggest mistake committed by these faithful historians what i am saying faithful they questioned every uh, epoch of our every data point of our literature everything in our end they rejected we need to present every time uh, evidences and kya kya karna padta but we never questioned uh, on what basis you are following first ad is and christians never followed the epoch till 13th 14th century they followed either marcian era diocletian era prior to that they followed a roman era okay they started referring to unknown incarnation or something but there are the uh, what i am saying for you the uh, and uh, i know you, it may be uh, you uh, you may not uh, i don't know whether you read my book that origin of the christian era fact or fiction in that one i have established that the same the 661 chronological error is proper in the western chronology jesus birth has to be dated 660 bc not first ad okay then alexander date has to go to 984 bc at that time there was a chandragupta he was he belonged to the chandra the iron pillar mentioned in chandra day he was not a gupta but we assume that is the gupta dynasty but it it actually gives that chronologically that our iron pillar is 3000 years old 
if you correct the chronology. It's not just 300 AD or 400 AD. So this is the problem. Why now you may say on what basis we can shift the Jesus birthday? The Easter calculus, the problem is first Western church was ruling uh, the Roman Empire. Thereafter, Eastern church, the Byzantine Empire. During that time, Syrian Christians became very powerful. And Syrian Christians, actually, they used to follow Indian Shaka calendar for fixing the uh, Easter date. So Easter date ki samasya hai. Because this, uh, after this uh, Julius Caesar and the Augustus, they started following this uh, idiotic calendar called January to December. Okay. It has nothing to do with the solar motions or uh, lunar motions. It is just somehow I am going to reconcile 365.25 days. So the Romans themselves, they used to refer to it as a unknown confusion. A confusion ka calendar. Hai. Because there is so much of confusion, you never know. Purnima ka bhoge, amavasya ka bhoge. When the spring equinox, nothing is fixed with this calendar. So the problem for the Easter is, Easter date can only be fixed after spring equinox. So how do you find a spring equinox in this January to December calendar? You, you have to refer it to a lunisolar calendar. Okay. Then you have to find a Purnima, a full moon. Thereafter, you have to find a sun. These are the three conditions to find the Easter date. That is impossible. Even in your today, if I ask you what is today's date, you have no idea. Today, 6th November. But can you tell me whether what is the lunar cycle today? Chalo, aapko ye Kartik aane wale hai, yeh ko. So this may be two days before Trayodashi. Okay, 13th day of the <laughs> first half. Okay. But uh, you can't find it. You have to know the lunar calendar or lunisolar calendar to find the day. The problem was the Easter. The, every the council of this uh, uh, the uh, Christian council, huge debates because so many they were initially they used to follow the Jewish calendar, but since they used to hate Jews because they killed Jesus, so they they stopped following Jewish calendar. Then they have to follow uh, Alexandrian calendar or Greek calendar. But Syrian Christians said that Indian calendar is much better because they are very better astronomers than the Greeks. And this has been mentioned by the one uh, Syrian bishop called Severus Sibo. So our Shaka calendar shifted. Same problem came into that. And I am not the first person to say there is an error. Al, Al, uh, Abul Fazal, he wrote Ayne Akbari. He gives that there is a two different opinions about Jesus' birth. Some count the Jesus' birth starting from the ninth degree in Copper, uh, the Capricorn in Makara Rashi, where others count from the zero degree or first degree of the Capricorn. There is a nine degrees difference. Okay, if you consider one degree in seventy-two precession of equinoxes, if you I know it is too much. Astronomical data, what I'm 72, one degree difference comes in 72. 72 into 9, it would be 648 years. So, this is the chronological error. So, this is, I know, it's a tough task to, um, uh, we will discuss this. It's a massive error because what I'm going to say that we need to reconcile entire world chronology. You cannot reconcile Indian chronology in isolation. But when we are going to do it, we need to validate Western chronology also. Don't simply accept faithfully. Validate everything. Thank you. So firstly, my compliments, what which are there, my same compliments to you for giving out this presentation and this. this. I have uh, means read so many other things. And one basic question, you one of the slides, though I joined late, you yes. had uh, shown that the first solar eclipses list you had shown, the earliest yes. solar eclipse you had shown on 1435 BCE. Yes. My my question is, is there any record in our Puranas anything wherein the solar eclipse has been recorded? And if it has been, how it has been recorded? Why I'm asking these questions? Because as you refer, or our calendar is astronomical or zodiac based. So looking at the zodiac, I know which particular month Titi is there. Gregorian calendar doesn't do that. So if we have a record of solar eclipses, which is a very, very definite landmark in the zodiac, if that is the case and if you know, won't the dating will be much easier rather than going to the inscriptions and anything? Because 
uh, if he so whatever mahabharat also mentions during the war so back to back eclipses and there are some of them and if we now interpolate it backwards we should be able to get a some particular date for the solar eclipse i just wanted to know in case is there any record available ha huh. um what i'll do i'll share my uh, you can go through pdfs na i almost uh, three books uh, i have uh, this actually mahabharata to media it is in two volumes uh, i will uh, ask the sangam talks if you can share the my uh, academia.edu i have given pdf file if you want any physical books then it has to be ordered from the amazon but the pdfs are freely available for second is in our indian literature <coughs> and epigraph the references are there in numerous uh, solar uh, occurrence of solar eclipses but first we have to establish the absolute chronology then only we can uh, uh, validate the occurrence of uh, solar eclipse particularly okay so uh, up to uh, prior to buddha nirvana whatever literature we mahabharata i have fixed 3162 then i have validated the uh, various references so based on that we can explain it but now i am uh, in this uh, chalukya dynasty there are uh, absolute dates is given in shaka then you have to simply calculate even exact date a date is given even week day is given you can easily reconcile but why we are failing so many eclipses not able to explain first so many years also like i have uh, given uh, 2027 shaka varsha uh, that is actually 90 years later even uh, the numerous uh, astronomical fact because every inscription uh, almost we give the shaka year and the <clears throat> many times tithis nakshatra they have been mentioned but tithi nakshatra that are cyclical so now you can reconcile that's not a big problem but the problem would be reconciling the eclipses so that's why what i did in the northern karnataka because wherever we are saying that the so total solar eclipse event that has to be visible okay and uh, we have indians following that surya siddhanta and other we have developed very good models to even calculate but the personal observation and the date and even time has been mentioned in that uh, mahadevatayo rubhayor vrishabha rasho वैशाख मध्य मामवास्यायां रोहिणी नक्षत्रे द डिटेल्स मेंशन इन दैट इंस्क्रिप्शन इट इज सेइंग दैट व्हेन बोथ सन एंड मून वर इन वृषभ राशि नेचुरली दे हैव टू बी इन वन राशि दैट इज द कंजंक्शन ऑन अमावस्या थे ओके एंड इट्स अ वैशाख अमावस्या वैशाख ज्येष्ठ मध्य मामवास्यायां दे रेफरिंग टू वैशाख अमावस्या एंड रोहिणी नक्षत्र ओके मध्यान्न काले एट द टाइम ऑफ नून now what i am saying the total occurrence of total solar eclipse badami taking as a longitude latitude the visibility of total solar eclipse and uh, in a particular longitude latitude a total solar eclipse can be visible in a 100 years or 200 years once sometime it may take 300 years also so based on that when i have worked out only one in 3000 years span only one total solar eclipse occurred in the may month means on vaishakha mavas so that becomes an absolute and it is a this gives me an absolute epoch of the ancient shaka because that we have forgotten now i how how I, we can rediscover that only with this kind of a tools and this kind of an astro, uh, scientific fact and this validates everything then now every uh, chalukya inscription whatever the solar eclipse that those i have reconciled because the it would be very long presentation if i do that that i have given in the book if you can go through i have reconciled every inscription i have not left wherever the solar eclipses have been mentioned or lunar eclipses have been mentioned i have reconciled that 583 bc if we follow 583 bc i have almost a list i have given in an inscription 84 solar eclipses the 583 bc perfectly except up to 95% where 78 ad fails to explain hardly 48% can i ask one more question yeah yeah now the uh, another thing with uh, what you explained practically all our calendars the starting point is the vernal equinox yes <coughs> since the starting point is the vernal equinox now the 
एम इज टू फिक्स दर्टिकुलर वर्नल इक्विनॉक्स अगेंस्ट दी जोडियक और ए पर्टिकुलर नक्षत्र रेथिंग वेर इन वी कैन फाइंड द टाइम लाइन यस सो सिंस दी ऑल आर आर कैलेंडर प्राइमरली बींग लूनार कैलेंडर एंड अ मिक्स ऑफ ल्यूनी सोलर कैलेंडर सी इफ वी हैव फिक्सड ए पर्टिकुलर इक्विनॉक्स एट अ पर्टिकुलर अगेंस्ट ए पर्टिकुलर स्टार we know the precession of equinox takes place which you also explained about uh, yes, yes. 1 degree in 72 years mm -hmm. now won't this be a more usable tool to find out astronomically since we have the software is available nowadays mm -hmm. earlier it may not be possible since the software is available and if we go track it backwards mm -hmm. to exactly certain portions of the history where you are referred to mm -hmm. do they match the particular the astronomical observations at that time won't that be a more correct position of the date rather than going like say in ephemeris also lahari ephemeris says something different krishnamurti ephemeris is different the other ephemeris there everybody starting year varies from 291 ad to 287 ad it differs so that is what my question is. do we have this we'll be able to do that since we are a continuous civilization starting from rigvedic period to till date okay there is no discontinuity we are not lost civilization in the between later thing it's a continuous civilization first even today we celebrate ganesh chaturthi and bhadrapada shukla chaturthi it means we know the birth day of the uh, means when shiva parvati lived and their son ganesha's date is there it means during the rigvedic period itself we have evolved a very uh, kind of a very uh, a good lunisolar calendar so now the uh, it means from vaidik era to till date a calendrical continuity first has to be established to validate all astronomical observations recorded in our literature <coughs> for that purpose this year i made one documentary that's a uh, because it would be huge subject i will ask the sangam talks to share <coughs> that is 8800 years of surya siddhanta i have exactly established the date of surya siddhanta that asmin krita yugasyante sarve madhya gata graha vina to pata mandocha <coughs> they are referring to a very conjunction of all planets when sun was in the first degree of aries and that was the chaitra shukla pratipada okay and this can repeat only in uh, thousands of years it is impossible to have a same so i have uh, verified up to 20000 years means somewhere 16000 bc i didn't go beyond because searching a civilization in ice age is totally a futile exercise because ice age is only one ritu in one ritu you can't have an agrarian society <laughs> so i took from 16000 bc onward because southwest monsoon became regular in india from there after because you need to have a regular monsoons to have a evolution of an agrarian society So I didn't go to up to sixteen thousand years. I got only one date possible, that is twenty second February six thousand seven hundred and seventy eight BC. Exactly this year, that calendar completes eight thousand eight hundred years. <coughs> And even weekday, that Ahar Gana started from there on. So we need to study our all astronomical. Prior to that, means I am saying beginning of Siddhanta Jyotisha was somewhere six thousand seven hundred and seventy eight. And six seven triple seven BC was the year from which we followed that Paitamaha Siddhanta and Saptarshi calendar. And we fixed our zodiac to Ashwini seven thousand three hundred and twenty two BC because at that time winter solstice shifted to Ashwini nakshatra. This vernal equinox calendar we started following only first century BC onwards. Even Mahabharata refers to Magh Shukla the calendar only Uttarayana. and rigvedic era we follow jivema sharada shatam means sharad ritu calendar so we have to follow magha masa magha shukla pratipada in sharad ritu not uttarayana it shifted till mahabharata from vedic era to so the atharva veda which is giving the kritika adi nakshatra they started from uttarayana so when winter solstice is at that is 9200 bc around so nakshatra sukta was compiled this is how every astronomical observation has to be but i took that sheet anchor for the archaeoastronomical study this the surya siddhanta date the conjunction makes sense because we need an absolute date we know we if you have some 500000 year plus minus then it 
won't give some perfect. So that's why I took the Surya Siddhantas, that conjunction, because that is the perfect epoch that Mayasura personally observed that cannot be back calculated. Otherwise, we have to accept that we knew the all, even gravitational, how the gravity functions, how the planetary motions affected by the gravity, and we have the modern computers to calculate for an accurate date. Mathematically, if you are calculating, if you even go 500 years, you may crop in one or two day error. That is too much in an astronomy. So, if the modern uh, historians are there, they, oh, you have back calculated. Then they have to accept that we had, <laughs> we were much more advanced than the today <laughs> in the, those years. So, back calculation is totally a foolish argument. It is the personal observation. So, I took the first and then work out the yuga chronology. Like in, in a Rigvedic period, five year yuga was there and 20 year Chatur Yuga. Why 20 year Chatur Yuga? We, that time we used to intercalate only Ardha Masa in 20th year. Because the, in a five year, two lunar lunar months you are intercalating. In the 20th year, you would be actually accumulating 15 days more. So what you have to do? The eighth lunar month, what you are going to intercalate in the 20th year, you do only Ardha Masa. Then what is happening? You are starting from Amavasya, ending in Purnima. Then you are starting from Purnima, ending in Amavasya. So 20 years you are following Amanta calendar. 20 years you are following Purnimanta calendar. That became too much complicated. Then Mayasura taught us, this is very cumbersome. Every year you have to do it. Let us follow the Jovian cycle after this. Intercalation should be based on the Jovian cycle. That led to the revolution uh, <clears throat> in Indian astronomy called Siddhanta Jyotisha. Then we thought, why should we follow Asura tradition? Then Brahma Siddhanta came, Paitamaha Siddhanta. Paitamaha said, no, we should follow the tradition. I mean, Magha Shukladi, the Vedic tradition, why should I follow Chaitra Shukladi? But they followed intercalation based on the 12 years and they expanded the yuga length. Not to, because you know, five years is not possible intercalation calculation. We need something in multiples to wells. Then, okay, let us have a yuga of 1200. So this is how our yuga length increased. Then later we found, let us have a 12,000 year Chatur Yuga cycle. Then later during, just before Mahabharata, we multiplied 12,000 by 360. Now the Chatur Yuga is 43 lakhs, 20,000 years. So this is how the a Yuga is just a, a beginning of a new cycle in a calendar. It's not some salacial event or something. So this is how the archaeoastronomy, we need to first establish our chronological continuity based on the, this one. And these are all that uh, Ayanansha related calculations are when everybody is just considering 78 AD and then they're fixing the Brahma Gupta, Varahamira somewhere 6th century and uh, Aryabhata also 499. I don't know on what basis they started. Due to this, they come with that uh, Chitra Paksha, Revati Paksha, is there, every, they have, because that 78 is the bias. And one more thing I can say in our all, uh, I don't, I hope no astrologer is sitting here because uh, I'm going to say that we are following wrong weekdays today. Our inscriptions give very perfect days. The 9th May 53 BC, the inscription copper, that Kurtakoti copper plate is, it is the Sunday, but in Julian calendar it is the Wednesday. But if you follow 22nd February 678 Surya Siddhanta, because Surya Siddhanta starts from the Sunday onwards, then the day is perfectly Bhaskara Dina. It is mentioned Bhaskara Dina. So in a way, today is not Sunday. It has to be Wednesday in our traditional calendar. Then all your Rahu columns would be wrong. <laughs> so, so this is the... Uh, we need to actually what happened the, our all astronomers everybody uh, neglected the epigraphic data epigraphic data is perfect data we were well educated and we were very advanced in uh, astronomy how can we write some nonsense in inscriptions so inscriptional data has to be reconciled with the uh, the uh, exact epochs then you will find out the correctness in the data so this is a massive exercise because uh, we cannot solve in uh, one or two data points and every and it is a multidisciplinary study uh, uh, chronology it's you cannot uh, only astronomers cannot solve it only historian cannot solve it only a scientist who knows the oceanography you have to every fact has to be reconciled 
So this is our, I think uh, I will ask the Sangam talks to share my that video you know, from the uh, that uh, 8,800 year that I have actually given the Ashwini Suptas in Rig Veda mentioned Ashwini Suptas, they take occurrence of autumnal equinox at Ashwini and that occurred somewhere 13,500 BC. So our civilization is at least uh, 16,000 years old and, uh, uh, and everything reconciles. Only our history has been a little bit mythologist. We need to simply separate mythology from the history, that's all. Then uh, everything, even Gajanana, Ganesha was not elephant head. He had a little bit bigger faith than others, though somebody told he is the Gajanana. Then we started Sanskrit people, oh, Gaja means uh, elephant and Anana means a face. So, because we have a mobile photo, take a photo like a Ganesha. Then that uh, in Natakas, because we wanted Adbhuta Rasa, then how we will do any uh, uh, character is coming on the stage and the, the audience should identify him immediately. Then they say Gajanana means Gaja means elephant. Then we made the uh, character in, in a pair the elephant face. Then everybody started with Gaja, Ganesha used to look like that. Then we made items like that. But he was historically a historical person. He lived during the Veda Vyasa's time and he, they were actually compiling the four Veda. Hi, sir. Thank you very much for uh, for the talk. I have been ah, following your you. talk and, and I also have been following uh, very closely the datings from uh, uh, your peers uh, like M.L. Raja, like uh, Dr. Dayasri yes. and Jijin uh, Adamuri and so on. And I find that uh, it, is, it is very pretty obvious that your your timeline and is 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 three thousand k is is the most um, seems to have the the cited yeah. by uh, arrived by most of the researchers. Um, it's just that it just that in one of the talk uh, from uh, Jijit Nadumuri, I noticed that he cited uh, about one thousand seven hundred with the idea about the chariot. Okay. Uh, cat, uh, archaeological findings which shows about 2000 BCE, therefore having it in 3000 BCE, uh, Mahabharata and where it uses chariot may not be feasible based on the archaeological findings. So I just like to get your view on that. Yeah, very good question. First of all, the 3100 BC is not my date or some ML Raja or Jayashin. No, it is our traditional date. Okay. I have shown you our epigraphic evidence, even entire Raja Tarangini. He takes, he starts from that, um, uh, what is uh, the first Gonanda onwards. He is referring to 32nd century BC only. Okay. So India traditionally followed the 32nd century BC. As it. The problem is only reconciling the Buddha's date. So where Jijit did not work on this. Actually, he initially, I then he initially he agreed with me. Later, when he thought that the chariots formed some in Sanoli and dated around 1900 BC, then said the chariot any chariot form should be only Mahabharata era. The chariots can be made later or even before that also. So just dating a chariot should not become an epoch for the Mahabharata era. First, second. Uh, and it is well known uh, from the literature, even the Albaruni writes about even Arin, the Greek historian, that Indians actually introduced war chariot driven by two horses to the west. Okay. Even the exact time of that person has been given by the Albaruni. I have calculated the date should be somewhere 2800 BC. So this Indians uh, excelled making these chariots from uh, Rigveda onward. There is a reference of Rathakaras in Rigveda. There is a, a guild of uh, Rathakaras existed during Rigveda era. So finally, the war chariots, uh, like driven by two horses, we've developed maybe some 500, 600 years before Mahabharata era. Then we extensively use those war chariots in the Mahabharata. Era. The chariot, war chariot history starts somewhere 4000 BC, at least 32nd century BC. Why it should start only 1900 BC? Because Sanoli chariots have been dead. So archaeology cannot become a primary evidence for fixing the chronology. What I am saying, traditional chronology is perfect. And moreover, the whatever 1900-2000 date also, they have calibrated the data. I want to know the what is the original data, the calendar, the exact carbon years. Then we can say probably maybe 400, 500 years, we may push back the date of the, the chariot. 
but <clears throat> even though uh, just you found chariot in sanoli so mahabharata has to be dated thereafter this is the some kind of a very uh, foolish argument i can say it you have, we have a chronological continuity and we have entire chronology given in literature and as well as our inscriptions we have to first establish that but my first challenge to them before dating mahabharata you have to date first buddha correctly what i am saying there is a chronological error of 1380 years if you do it then entire traditional chronology is perfect even though sanalo chariot probably they are post mahabharata period this chariots belong to nowhere it is written that the chariot belong to arjuna or anything any inscription is there on the chariot no but we made this uh, uh, war chariots uh, we excel making of this war chariots uh, somewhere in the fourth millennium itself so that's why just sinoli chariot should not become a sheet anchor for fixing the mahabharata date. we have to first correct the chronological error up to buddha thereafter if you follow the tradition 32nd century bc that perfectly reconciles with the sinoli but some this archaeologists what they simply close it down 1900 before 1900 war chariots did not exist ye to pehle ye ya before sinoli excavation mean 2010 onwards we believed that chariots we, we we actually learned from the outsiders okay now that everything has been changed so that's why what i'm saying the, the dating of sinoli chariot has nothing to do with the dating of mahabharata we have to first correct the chronological error uh, uh, errors in dating of buddha then you fix the mahabharata era then everything can be easily reconciled